The date is the 3rd of April, 1945. In the final months of World War II, on the Western Front, the German Wehrmacht is in disarray. With Central Command increasingly fragmented, and ever more units surrendering to the advancing Allies, the Third Reich is rapidly losing vast swathes of territory within the borders of Germany itself. In early April, Allied armies succeed in encircling over 300,000 German troops in the Ruhr pocket, suffering only 10,000 casualties in the process. Having liberated the city of Siegen, American troops of the US First Army descend into the storage caves beneath the city. Here they find a huge variety of valuable artifacts and works of art. The soldiers also stumble upon an incredible find, the Reichskrone, the crown of the Holy Roman Empire. Pictured here at a jaunty angle atop the head of 29-year-old Private First Class Ivan Babcock of the US Army's 165th Signal Photo Company as he enjoys a smoke. But how did the imperial crown of one of Europe's most powerful empires come to be worn by an American GI from Michigan? To understand that, we have to go back to the 10th century. This incredible crown, known in German as the Reichskrone, the imperial crown, was most likely created for the coronation of the Emperor Otto I in the year 962. Although Charlemagne, perhaps the most famous ruler of the Holy Roman Empire, is often depicted wearing the Reichskrone, these images are anachronistic. Obviously Charlemagne died some 150 years before the creation of the crown in 814 AD. However, it does demonstrate how important the imperial crown came to be viewed in relation to the Holy Roman Empire. Before we go any further with the history of the crown, let us take a closer look at this outstanding piece of medieval craftsmanship. Although it may at first appear rough or crude to our modern eye, it is undeniably an incredibly intricate work. Firstly, the shape. It is quite quickly clear that the crown is not rounded, but octagonal in shape, made of eight hinged segments or plates. The octagonal shape is significant, as it may have been a reference to Byzantine crowns, which also typically have this distinctive shape. At the time of its construction in the 10th century, the Holy Roman Empire was claiming to be a continuation of the Old Roman Empire in the West, a fact that was often disputed by the Byzantines. Each segment is made of extremely high quality 22 karat gold, lending the crown its distinctive warm glow. Originally, long golden pins attached these separate segments together. These were also removable, allowing the crown to be disassembled for storage or for transport. Four of the segments, or plates, bear plaques depicting biblical scenes or figures, known as build platen, or picture plates. These are constructed of enamel arranged using the cloison technique, where wire, usually gold, is used to separate and hold in place the separate pieces of enamel. The craftsmanship of the imperial crown is distinctly Byzantine in style, and it is likely that its creator would have learned the technique from Byzantine artists. Yet another nod to the Byzantine Empire, and likely an attempt by the creator of the crown to co-opt some of the established prestige and majesty of medieval Byzantium. Each of the picture plates is surrounded by pearls and sapphires set in raised and extremely intricate metal filigree work. The biblical scenes depicted upon each plate are clearly intended to display the divine favour enjoyed by the Holy Roman Emperor, and as such are concerned with depicting biblical kingship specifically. The front right plate shows Christ enthroned as king over the entire world, seated between two cherubim. A red enamel depiction reads, By me, kings reign. The back right plate depicts King Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah, whose names are depicted in red enamel. The prophet holds a scroll which reads, Behold, I will add fifteen years to your life. The front left plate shows the archetypal wise biblical king, King Solomon, holding a scroll which reads, Fear the Lord and flee from evil. Finally, the back left plate shows King David, who also holds a scroll, this time depicting a verse from the Psalms, the renowned king delights in doing justice. By displaying powerful imagery of biblical kingship, the imperial crown associates the person of the Holy Roman Emperor with these prestigious models of monarchy, allowing the emperors to derive authority from these esteemed examples and establishing the divine right of kings. The other four plates are known as stone plates or steinplatten. 
These hold the majority of the 144 precious stones which adorn the crown. There are also almost the same number of pearls dotted across the crown, laid out in patterns across each of the plates or segments. Interestingly, the precious stones are not cut into facets, the flat faces and geometric shapes, which we are accustomed to seeing when we think of gemstones. This technique was not known at the time of the crown's construction. Instead, the stones have been rounded and polished, a technique known as cabochon, and fixed to the crown using delicate metal wires or filigree. This delicate metal filigree raises the gemstones from the surface of the crown and gives the entire piece an incredibly complex texture. At the top of the front plate of the crown sits a sapphire. This sapphire replaces a famous lost gemstone known as Derveza, the orphan, so named because of its uniqueness. Writing in 1250, the philosopher and Dominican friar Albert the Great described it thus. The orphan is a jewel in the crown of the Roman emperor. Because the like of it has never been seen elsewhere, it is called the orphan. It has the color of wine, a delicate red wine, and it is as if the dazzling white snow penetrates the bright wine red, and yet it remains dormant in this redness. From this description, it has been suggested that the orphan may have been a white opal with a deep red fire, a garnet, or perhaps a red zircon. The date of removal of this legendary stone from the crown, and the reason for its removal, remain a mystery. The crown also boasts a highly decorated arch from front to back, upon which tiny seed pearls spell out Conrad by the grace of God on one side, and Emperor of the Romans, Augustus, on the other side. Added during the reign of Conrad II, this decoration is a clear indication of the Holy Roman Emperor's claim to be the rightful successor to the Roman Empire of antiquity. In front of the arch is a bejeweled cross, with an engraving of the crucified Christ on the reverse side. It is also worth noting that there are three small holes on both side plates. These were most likely used to hang pendants, known as pendilia, another distinctive feature of Byzantine crowns, which can be seen on the mosaic depiction of the Byzantine Emperor Justinian I at the Basilica of San Vitale in Ravenna. After its creation, the imperial crown was held in a series of imperial castles before settling at the castle of Karlstein near Prague in 1349. With the upheaval of the Hussite Wars in Bohemia in the 1420s, Sigismund of Luxembourg had the crown transferred to Nuremberg for safekeeping, where it stayed for over four centuries. In 1796, with political upheaval once again threatening the Holy Roman Empire in the form of war with revolutionary France, the crown was taken to Regensburg and from there transferred to Vienna in 1800. It was here that the empire was abolished only six years later, on the 6th of August, 1806. The now redundant crown remained in Vienna until 1938. With the Nazi Anschluss of Austria, the imperial regalia was taken to Nuremberg, where the crown had previously resided. During the war, the crown was placed in the Historische Kunstbunker, an underground vault beneath Nuremberg Castle. It was from this bunker that the imperial crown was finally recovered by American troops led by medievalist scholar and art historian Lieutenant Walter Horn in August 1945. From here, the crown was transferred back to Vienna, where it remains to this day. But if the imperial crown of the Holy Roman Empire was housed in Nuremberg during the war, how did an American GI come to be pictured wearing it in the city of Siegen in April 1945? The answer is rather disappointing. The Siegen crown is in fact an identical replica, produced in 1915 for a display at Charlemagne's old imperial capital and the coronation place of successive Holy Roman Emperors the city of Aachen, on the western border of modern-day Germany. The soldier pictured, Ivan Babcock, is actually wearing the replica crown. Nonetheless, this photo is quite an incredible scene from the closing stages of the Second World War, quite neatly encapsulating the discoveries of looted Nazi treasures that were occurring throughout Germany as the Wehrmacht retreated. Ivan Babcock survived the war and returned home to Mason County, Michigan, where he died in 1994 at the age of 77.